In this video, I'm going to be talking about essential jazz piano phrases. It's Paul Toby here from jazzmental.com. Thanks for joining me. And I should mention that the idea for this video came from a comment on YouTube by Kyle Lim, I hope I'm pronouncing that properly, who says, you should make a video on creating jazz lines and or melodies for new tunes. So we'll leave the melodies for new tunes for another video. Right now, in this video, we're focused on these essential piano jazz phrases and lines. The concept of improvisation is easier thought of when you think of it in chunks. So a lot of players think, oh, I'm going to make this great long phrase, but what they don't realize is that in that phrase can be several smaller phrases. And I'm going to make reference to a recording by Sonny Stitt. If you don't know who Sonny Stitt is, he's a great jazz saxophone player. If you divide his music up into small chunks, what I call Stitt's bits, you can clearly see that there are elements that you can then take out, put over any key, and then make long phrases out of that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to play you the solo that he does over Autumn Leaves. Well, a portion of that solo. It's essentially a few bars. And then we're going to analyze each of the different sections. I've got three of them that I want to share with you that are essential to making you sound like a great improviser. By the time you get done this video, you'll have a pretty clear understanding of how soloing is actually put together. So this is really cool. I'm going to play you the solo now, and then we'll dive in and start to tear it apart. Let's get going. Okay, so that was Sonny Stitt's solo over Autumn Leaves. So let's start to take a look at the different elements. The first one is, these are chord changes to Autumn Leaves. So the standard chord changes are a bunch of two fives leading down to G minor. So it's essentially starting with C minor. So you'll notice in the piece of sheet music in front of you that they don't actually play the B flat major seven to E flat major seven. He does a bunch of substitutions. So let's take a look at this first part, which you're trying to get from C minor to A minor seven flat five. And a typical progression is B flat major seven and then E flat major seven on this chord. But he doesn't do that. What he does is he substitutes a couple of different two fives. He goes from B minor to E7 and then B flat minor to E flat 7. So from C minor, it's like this. So it's going down in two fives in half step. So that's the first concept that you need to understand. A lot of times, you don't necessarily have to play over the changes that are created in the tune you can actually start to substitute two fives, whether it's a half step above or a whole step above. In this case, it's going down in half steps. So if you take a look at the B minor chord, he's playing clearly notes that represent B minor seven to E seven. So that's all in the key of A. So why is that even in there? And it's in there because he's sidestepping the key by a half step. We talk about playing outside in another video. I'm going to post a link up here to my concept of playing outside. And this is really part of that concept. It's like thinking about the key that's a half step away and also the dominant seventh chord. So that's an interesting thing that you need to pay attention to. All right, let's move on to number two. Let's erase some of this here. And let's move on to the second concept, and that is using pickup notes on downbeats. So essentially what you're doing is you're spelling the chord, but you're starting it from a half step below and then spelling the chord, but you're doing it on the beat. So a typical improviser does that off the beat, for example, where the D to the E flat is the half step, but it's on the end of the beat. What Sonny does is he plays it on the beat. 
So here, so B to C is a half step. And then he does it again here on the beat, half step from F sharp to G. And then again on the beat here, half step. So the reason why he's doing this is to get away from the normal half step below, which is a half beat in front of the chord. He's playing it on the beat. So it creates a lot more tension. So let's just play the line here. Again, that's really cool. And then a lot of players would be, he's doing, So again, that's that half step pickup on the downbeat. Very cool. So that's something that can make your playing sound quite unique, different than the normal way of approaching things. So again, Sonny Stitt was a genius. That's all part of the Stitt's Bits thing that I'm looking at. Just take these little Stitt Bit chunks of ideas. So the last thing that I wanted to share with you, in addition to that half step on downbeats, is the whole idea of bebop scales. Now, I'm gonna post a video up here on how to approach bebop scales because they're very important, but you'll notice in this transcription, there are several instances, or at least a few instances, of the bebop scale. I'm gonna draw some parentheses around a bebop scale. So this is a bebop scale exactly descending on F7. So notice that we're not just sticking to C minor here, we're going into F7. So this is literally a 2-5 in anticipation also of this 5-7 chord here as well. And then he does it again here. This is a D7 bebop scale. Okay, let's play the first one. That's a total bebop scale, right? but he's playing it over the C minor chord, which is really part of that stit bit philosophy. It's C minor seven and F seven are interchangeable, just like D minor seven and G seven are interchangeable. So any two five, you can sort of play the dominant seventh over the minor and you can play the minor over the dominant seventh because the bebop scale is essentially the same. Let's do the D seven chord down here and where I'm focusing on right now is right here. Again, total bebop scale. So let's play the two five where it's going from A minor seven flat five. The interesting thing about that A minor seven flat five is he's not actually playing the flat five. The flat five is there, but he doesn't play that he plays natural. Now, I'm not sure if that was intentional or it's just there's a lot of notes flying by and he just played the E natural instead of the flat five, but anyway. So that's the last thing that I wanna talk about too is this thing at the end. So again, Passing notes approaching the note which is on the downbeat is a really standard thing in jazz. So if I'm trying to get to G, I'm like going a half step below, whole step above, and then half step. So taking that concept, he's basically doing triads and then finding ways to reach the next beginning of that triad. And there's those passing notes, or. So he plays instead of kind of the same thing. So what you need to think about in those triads is Kind of an interesting way to get to the second inversion and the third inversion of each chord. Just use the passing note to the second inversion 
to the third inversion, back to the first. So those three concepts together can really help you with your improvisational skills. One, playing two fives wherever it makes it interesting. For example, in this particular case, he's substituting a bunch of two fives to get from C minor to A minor seven flat five. The second concept was the half step below the chord starting on the downbeat. So for example, and then the last thing was the whole concept of using bebop scales. Now I did add one thing, which was the triads. And that just sort of popped into my head, so I thought it was important to introduce that as well. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you want to rewind it and play the solo again that I did at the beginning fast, you can see how it all starts to come together. So this is Stitz Bits. In another video, I'm gonna continue this idea of how to make great jazz piano phrases. And I think Sonny Stitt is a good example of someone whose music you can start to decipher. And again, there's nothing random about soloing. It's all contrived and it's all based on scales and chords and passing notes. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, if you have any questions or you wanna drill down on a specific aspect of this, all you need to do is post a comment and ask. And of course, if you have a great solo over Autumn Leaves that you wanna share with us, put a link to that as well. Thanks a lot for your time. Well, thanks for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We're making five videos a week, just like this one on various aspects of music and the music business. So I'd really appreciate it if you could come back and join me another time. Take care.